The Lyrians prepared for battle, their silence absolute, in darkness, illuminated only by the pale light of the moon. Meave was restless. She paced nervously in a circular pattern, awaiting the signal they'd agreed upon. Blast, it's taking long. Much, much too long. Finally, a torch's faint glow appeared atop the towering walls. It disappeared, then glowed again, and one more time around. Meave leapt in the air, and as she did so, barely stifled a cry of utter joy. They made it. It worked. Villain, it's time. Sound the horns. Attack! Moments later, Lyrians in the hundreds burst from the trees. Lyria! The Nilfgaardian defenders loaded their catapults and ballistae. They did so slowly, convinced the castle walls remained impenetrable. Then they heard chains grinding and clinking, and the sound sent shivers down their spines. Bewildered, they watched the main gate rise as the attacking force rushed forth. Ashes! Ach, Quan, Ayn, Lydian! General Epdahi dispatched an elite unit to take back the winch at once. Yet he saw this was in vain and all was lost when Meave rode into the castle courtyard. Meave had begun the day known as a great warrior. Yet by night's end, legend was the cloak she wore. Her shield stopped powerful blow after blow as her blade found gaps in her foe's black armor. At first, Nilfgaardian scoured the fray in search of the queen, hoping to prove great heroes. Soon, she was their chief scourge and they began to flee before her blade that sung their death. Ratroit! Ratroit! What was this extraordinary vigor that surged through Meave? Naturally, she wished to liberate her castle and realm, drive off the invaders, defeat the arrogant General Epdahi. But in that moment, above all else, she longed to fight her way through to the guardhouse and bring Gascon's party relief. Follow me! Move! Move! As she stepped through the door into the tower, the silence told Meave she'd arrived too late. Gascon's men lay slaughtered in pools of their own blood. The man himself slumped over the winch's crank. Three arrows in his chest rose and fell with his each ragged breath. Meave tore off her cloak and pressed it against him, desperate to stem the bleeding. Help's on the way. Don't you even think of dying. You know... <clears throat> Wheezed Gascon, a slight smirk on his lips. I always enjoyed doing things just to spite you. Medics on the stairs in the guardhouse steps away, heard a long, blood-curdling wail. They entered the room to find the queen kneeling, pounding the wall with her fists, her eyes flooded with tears. Gascon lay motionless beside her, covered by her cloak. The queen rose, her fists clenched, her shoulders rigid, her knuckles white. Her face betrayed no sorrow, no despair, just rage, hot as a forge, immeasurable. Now's not the time to mourn. Seethed Meave, struggling to stay calm. Now's the time for war, for slaughter, revenge. With victory today, We'll recover our home, return to our kin, and set our blades aside at last. Yet until victory is ours, they must drink. Drink greedily of Nilfgaardian blood! The Lyrians were at the brink, near their breaking point. They'd followed me for thousands of miles, over snow-clad peaks, through forbidding swamps. They'd fought, survived countless battles at her side, and though their gazes were now weary, she knew they'd follow her into fire. Your great. The black clads. They've holed themselves up in the upper keep. We went to breach the wall. Alas, to no avail. Meave nodded, twirled her sword, then leapt upon a mount. Her eyes spoke pure determination. So we'll bloody well try again. Ha <laughs> ha!
This is the end at Dahi. Do you hear me? I shall stick your head on a pike! Go on, knock out one of your teeth. Again and again and again. I must thank you. Your fortress has superbly solid walls. Hmm. Archers, let it be night. Obscure the sun with arrows. Abolist to your command.
as you command. Necessity! <laughs> Inventions, mum! Oh. Off to the front yet again. The chase is on! <laughs> that was not in the spell books. My prescription, a bit of blood letting. Notice! All roads lead to Nilfgaard!
Hmm. Highly curious case. Nilfgaard had the upper hand, yet the black-clad spirits had suffered. They now made more use of shields than of swords. When me finally broke through their line, they raised their arms in surrender. Rivia Castle had fallen. It was hers once more. Troker! Nein tu vin! Meave showed her prisoners of war mercy, knowing full well they'd only followed orders. Death would be the fate of only Ardl Epdahi, the one Nilfgaardian who'd issued those commands. Alas, the general had disappeared. A prisoner revealed Epdahi had fled as soon as the Lyrians had surged towards the upper keep. He had glided down to the lower castle in a wicker basket for transporting food. Curled up beneath potato skins and other scraps, he'd scurried away not unlike a common maggot. Meave cursed her luck and leaned back against a Merlin. Dawn was yet a few hours off, but the horizon had already begun to glow blood red. The Nilfgaardian reserves now drew near, too late to prevent the castle's fall. I'll get him, muttered the Queen, more to herself than anyone else. I swear on all that's sacred I'll catch the bastard. But now we've a pressing matter to see to, preparing the defense. That night, the war turned, with the battle for Rivia Castle as its fulcrum. Meave's great victory, not only retaking the stronghold in a single evening, but also fending off a further invading army, proved the Nilfgaardian Colossus had feet of clay. The armies of the North had united and now seemed to be on the attack everywhere. Imperial forces, while still far more numerous, lay stretched over thousands of miles. Their position was untenable, and Nilfgaard's commanders knew this. In a decisive battle, they yet stood a chance, so they gave said battle and suffered a resounding defeat. Just a few months on from that memorable night in Rivia, the Imperial army was in utter disarray. Aldersburg, the fortress, remained a last point of resistance. General Ep Dahi and what had survived of Army Group East had dug in there, this place where Nilfgaard had triumphed grandly in the war's early days, would now bear witness to its impending defeat. It seems history, after all, has a sense of justice or humor or both. Though Meave had already reclaimed her realm, she refused to retire her sword just yet. For King Demavend had requested her aid in purging Edern of the invader. How could she refuse? She owed the king a favor, firstly. Yet she also had a burning desire to settle the score with Epdahi. Demavend's envoy and I spoke, Your Majesty. The king has Aldersburg surrounded. He awaits and won't begin the assault till you arrive. Good. I truly hate to miss it. Tell the troops to prepare. Gear and ire. Of course, Your Grace. Yes? Is there something else? Pardon my boldness, Your Grace, but... I can't help but be concerned. You don't sleep. You have the air of illness about you. Hmm. I think back to that night in Rivia often, to Gascon's death. Perhaps I made a mistake. Perhaps he didn't have to die. He didn't, Your Majesty. He needn't have been there at all. I'm a soldier. I swore to serve you. Gascon, not so. He might have left at any time. 
Guilt. Pity trouble you, Your Grace. I know. But he signed on willingly and knew exactly what for. Gascon gave his life for he thought you worthy of it. There's no greater proof of friendship, no greater gift one can give. Accept it, Your Grace, and remember him with gratitude, not sorrow. You're right. I thank you, Reynard. That I needed to hear. We've talked enough. We must march on to Aldersburg. Your Grace, if I may. Some of our comrades in arms would like a word with you. The war nears its end. Paths are likely to diverge. I see. Thank you. I shall stop by the mess tent later. I'm pleased to see you again, ma'am. You need something? The war's near its end. The future. What does it hold for you, Isabel? Wise counsel will always find a place at my court. Mm. A tempting offer, ma'am. So be it. I shall stay. But I've one condition. You're never to force me to wear shoes. <laughs> These terms I can agree to. Duty calls. I must go. Of course. Should you need me, I'll be here. Arnjolf. Find a place at one of the tables. Have a drink. Meet my men. <laughs> Think there's been a failure to communicate, lass? I didn't join your army to meet men, but to meet death. A good, honorable death. The quicker you lead me to that, the better. I wish not to pry, but why do you long for death? For only death can cleanse me of shame. You must have heard what they call me. Arnulf the Patricide. A moniker I earned. Oh, I did. To die by one's child's hand. A terrible fate. And it shall be mine as well if I lose this war. But did you earn it? This fate? What? I... <sighs> Not always have I been just with Willem. I dismissed him. Neglected him, but... <laughs> Neglected? Listen, lass. My da. He beat me. Till my skin turned blue and I chucked red bile. He drink and beat, drink and beat. My brother, Ulf, da clobbered him to death. My ma, she took her own life, never met this son of yours. But I know you's a bit now, and I can say this, no kind of yours needs slain. I can't help but wonder, what does it signify, the tattoo on your head? Ain't a tattoo. Carve these runes with a knife. The method makes little difference. What do they mean? Aim here. Message for enemy archers. Alas, don't seem they can read it. At least not from a distance. And when they get close, it's already too late for them. The war nears its end. Sadly. Sadly, why? I survived. Again. Rebuild your land, Queen. Enjoy your life. Me and my men. We'll be moving on. Arnjolf, in Lyria and Rivia, your past matters not. Nor does your shame. Stay. What about after? What do I tell my ancestors when the time comes? I yearn to sit at their table, lass, and drink mead in their company. So go I must. So long, Arnjolf. Always good to see the Queen. How can I help you? Our conversation in Mahakam. Do you recall it? When you resolved to join my force, leave your homeland? Of course. Clear as day, that. You saved me and my clan. I'm in your debt. Will be for some time. Well, we've won the war. And you had a hand in the victory. Heavily so. As I see it, you've more than repaid your debt. Feeling a wee bit... choked up? As King Desmond said when an assassin's bolt ran clear through his esophagus. Come here and give us a squeeze. Later, perhaps. But Gabor, any plans for what comes next? Ha! I wasn't expecting to have this chat, so uh, I'm a bit caught with my knickers doing past my knees. War's over, but we've much left to do. Our relations with non-humans, for instance. I mean to improve them. And I think you could help, Gabor, greatly so. 
meaning you'd like me to stay in your court? I'd see it as an honour, Your Majesty. An honour true. We shall return to this conversation later. No skin off my back. We see each other, Your Grace. Your Grace, I wished once more to express my gratitude for your show of mercy. I showed mercy, true, but felt much more. Anger, pain, now resentment. You hurt me, Reynard, wounded me to the bloody core. I don't know what else to say on the matter, so let's not speak of it. As you wish, Your Grace. The war nears its end. What next for Reynard Odo? Whatever you command, Your Grace. Ugh. Is something amiss, my lady? To be perfectly blunt, I've no wish to give you orders anymore. Your Grace? Would you wish me to leave? Remove me from the court? No, Reynard. I'd wish you to stay. But I'd no longer wish to be your queen alone. Do you catch my meaning? I do, Meave. I do. It's time I attended to other matters. Meave, slayer of the Blacklands, long live the Queen! 